Greetings, friend. I will give you the puzzle tips you need to know to solve this puzzle from the 2023 Sudoku Grand Prix. I'm also going to do it without marks. Click below if you want to give it a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, first thing you want to look at is for some cross hatching. You got these fives in columns eight, nine. This five cutting across row two means there's going to be a five right there. And then you'll need to look at the sixes, columns four and six, and then in rows nine and seven. I mean, there's only one place left for a six. Whenever you have four of a can going into a three by three block, you know there's only going to be one possibility left. And this is good for us because now we can look at this nine cutting across row nine and coming down column eight. And what it does is creates what's called a pointing pair. All right. And what I mean by pointing pair, it means that the nine has to be somewhere here in block nine, but it's limited to these two cells. So it's going to be in row seven. It means nothing else can be in row seven. No other nine can be in row seven. And so what does that tell us? You can't have a nine in any of those spots. You already got a nine right here. We can actually solve this cell for a nine. And so that's nice. Pointing pairs are great. And that's definitely one of those tips you need to solve a puzzle like this. You know, with the Soka Grand Prix, you're going to be using pointing pairs, naked pairs, hidden naked singles, uh, hit uh, up to naked triples, maybe even some claiming pairs. Nothing more complicated than that. But the way they go between them, you really need to kind of watch these strategies and figure them out to make sure that you're doing it uh, just the right way. So the next thing to look at when you do this is you kind of create the shelf. So there's two cuts across now, row seven. You got this two coming down. So we can actually solve for two here. And what I like is you can, you can do a lot of focusing here in this block. And now you see these twos and this two cut across for row one. So it's going to solve for two there. And now you got this five and this five in rows one and two and this five coming up column four means that we can actually solve for a five right here. And if we come down with this five and this five in columns four and five, where can a five be now in block eight? It can be right there. And to be able to focus and put a lot of cell, uh, uh, fill in a lot of cells in one block, it reminds me of this world record solve analysis video that I did. I'm gonna put a link to that at the end. So you wanna watch all the way through and check that out. It's amazing to see how uh, someone sets a world record in the way uh, this person, how she solves it, it's awesome. Okay, but after doing this five right here, you're going to get a little stuck. It's going to get a little slow. You're not going to be able to find anything. And when I did this, I remember getting kind of stuck right here. And you have to switch now from all this cross hatching to finding naked singles if you want to make more progress in the puzzle. And so let's go to the corner here. Let's look up here. What can this cell be? Well, it can't be a one or a two. Can't be a three. Can't be a four. It can't be a five or a six, and it can't be an eight, and it can't be a nine. This cell has to be a seven. And that is great uh, to find that. And it was there from the very beginning. If you went and just looked in this corner, you could solve that. All these givens were what you needed to solve that first seven. If you come down here, this is another nutty trick. What can this cell be? Well, it can't be a one, two, three, four, five, six, eight or nine. This cell can be a seven too, and it can be solved right from the very beginning. And this is crucial because this is going to help us create a lot more solves in this puzzle. And why is that? Because now you want to focus where there's the greatest restriction. If you look for the greatest restriction, it's going to be this column six. There's only two cells remaining, a one and a seven. Well, we just solved this seven right here. And so you can solve that for a one and solve that for a seven. And that's very helpful for making progress. And I remember getting kind of stuck at this point. It took me a while. This puzzle probably took me around almost 10 minutes, which is not good for me. Uh, one of the challenges I have is that you have to write them down on pencil. I'm so used to computer solving, like you see here, that I, 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 I'm not really good with my handwriting and didn't really get all the marks in there. And that kind of slowed me up. I think I also had to retrace my steps a little bit. All right, we got these ones in rows one and two, and this one in column nine means this can be a one right there. So again, you know, because we found that seven, we can do all, all that kind of solving there. So let's look here at the fives. Got the fives in row seven, eight. This five right here means we can solve this cell for a five. And now with these two fives and these fives, I think we can finish up the fives because the only place left in block four for five is right there. So let's look at where the seven can be here in block eight. You see how this seven cuts across row five and you got the seven coming down. 
column seven, column nine. We had solved that seven, so we can look and go, oh, okay, that's the only place left for seven. And now I wanna focus on where there's the greatest restriction. I see only three cells remaining in column eight. And it's a three, four, and eight. And I wanna point this out to you, another tip that you need to know. If you see two of the missing candidates right here, and then you see one of those repeats up here, you know you can solve all three cells. The reason being is because the three and eight are right there, this has to be your four. And because the eight being up there, this has to be your three, and of course that leaves the eight. So look for that, and it'll help you solve three cells at one time. It's so now where do we want to go next? We filled in some uh, another, you know, a couple of cells right here in column. Excuse me, in block six. Well, it looks how the three cuts across rows four and six, and three coming up here. Now we know we can solve this for a three. So we kind of fill in more spots there. I don't see anything else we can solve right away, but let's look over here. Uh, we only got two cells remaining now up here in column, in, in row one, four and a nine. I see a four, so I know this has to be your nine, it has to be your four. So that's a way to solve two cells at one time. And now you want to go right for that cross hatching. That's the quickest method. I come down and go, well, there's only one place left for a four in block five. And then I see this nice naked triple that this forms, right? We know these three cells have to be uh, a one, an eight, and a nine. And they're also locked in block five. So that's going to help us out quite a bit. Because we know this is a one, eight, or nine. And then this would have to be the remaining cans, which is the three and a seven. We can't do the three and a seven, but with this one, eight, nine, I see this nine and one right away. And I know I can solve this cell for an eight. And so we'll look and see where there's more restrictions. So I kind of come over here and notice there's only two candidates remaining, right? We're looking for a one and we're looking for a two. Well, I see my one right here. So this is your two and this is your one. This is kind of how, you, how you're going to make the progress. Uh, you always want to keep looking for these opportunities. Okay, something else we can kind of see. See how this two and six cut across right here? That means that a, this is a two or a six hidden pair. All right, because the two and six are here. They have to be somewhere in block six. And so I'll color that. So they got to be in those two spots, which means now we know that these two spots has to be a nine or a four. And so we can kind of use that to help us solve what's going to be uh, in these spots for this puzzle. And what's nice is now I know one of these is a nine. I got a nine right here. This cell now has to be your nine. So we can solve that for the nine. And you can solve this for the one. Hopefully you understand that the nine has got to be in one of those two spots. So it can't be right there. Let's get rid of these. And these are another things, another trip tip that you can use doing those hidden pairs to kind of make progress where you may not be able to to see uh, what you can do there. All right, now with these two ones, and this one, I'm gonna go right back to that cross hatching and solve that for a one. Uh, and then I wanna go, okay, I only got two cans remaining. I'm looking for a two and I'm looking for a six. But if I look at these sevens, there's four sevens coming into the block. And so I know I can solve this cell for a seven. We remember this was a four nine. It's still going to be a four nine, so we know that remaining cell, this has to be an eight. Another way to see it is you could have looked and saw there's eights in rows five and six, and there's only one possibility up there. So great. Now, when we do that, you know, this cell can no longer be an eight. We already have that cut across two spots for an eight there. Can't solve that, but we're going to also look and see what else can we do. Well, I see the six coming up now in column three, so it means this has to be a six and then what does that leave us with these two spots it's going to be a two or a four well there's my four so here is your four and here's your two okay now we got to the spot where we only have one cell remaining this is called a full house whenever you have a full house you know you can solve that cell so i know i can solve this for a six and you remember uh, from our working memory this has to be now your two okay and now this two coming up, column seven, this two right here means this has to be a two right here. I see this four cutting across, so I know this has to be the four. And now I can do that four, nine, because I want to use the working memory, another tip. And also know that whenever I see a full house, I want to fill it out. I can guarantee I know how to solve this cell, and it has to be a six. And then I come down here, and it looks like I only got one cell remaining. It's got to be a nine. So we'll come over here. I see there's a six here. And then I look up in block one. Okay, six can only be in one spot because of this six right there. So I can solve this for a six. 
So I see two spots here. One's got to be a three. One's got to be an eight. Here's my three. So I know that's a three. That's an eight. And now with this eight, I knew I was trying to get another eight down here or eliminate an eight. So this has to be your eight. It's the only place left. And remember, this is a one or eight right here. So there's your eight. And here is your one. And now with those two ones, with this one coming down, I can solve this for a one. I have a full house here. So I'll go back and go, hey, this has to be a three. And it works my my way right here to a seven. And it kind of reminds me, I said I, I end up using marks when I'm solving with the pencil, but it, it because my handwriting is not that great, I tend to not uh, be able to see the marks and then I have to erase them. I feel like it's taking a lot of time. There's actually three different ways you can solve a Sudoku puzzle. Without marks is what I've been doing now, with marks using that Snyder notation or using the modern software approach. I'll put a link to my all three ways of solve Sudoku video right now. You want to check that out. It's really cool because it's all depends on how you want to approach the puzzle and how difficult it is and what method you should use to solve it. All right, what is remaining here? Looks like I just need a three. And so then I have another full house right here. We'll finish this up. Oh, I don't see a nine. So I got to solve that for a nine and I don't see a seven. So I got to solve that for a seven. We got two spots left. The easiest way to solve, you could go, okay, you know, there's going to be a three and a four here. Or you could look up here and go, I don't have a four, but there's a four in column two. So that has to be a four and it has to be a three. You need to watch this video if you want to solve championship puzzles better. Also, Yoshi Broshi's Puzzle Challenge is going on right now until February 20th. Join the Smarty Party. Click on the membership link below. Thank you so much for watching.